Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about becoming a good software developer in any programming language. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are the steps to use in order to become a good programmer in any programming language? Well, we're swinging for the fences now because now we're like this is like next level. Usually people ask me, how do I become a good Java developer? How do I become a good JavaScript developer or C Sharp or Python or Ruby or something like that? And now we're going, how do I become a good programmer in all of the languages? So the way that I usually recommend people to, to do this is, well, your experience may differ, but I've always found that being problem oriented uh, is the way to go here and what I mean by being problem oriented is that in order for you to solve a problem or to pick a tool or anything that you're going to use as the solution to your problem you really have to take your time to understand what it is that you want to do and start figuring out what you need to achieve in order to meet those results let me explain that a little bit so as an example uh, let's talk about a few problems that I've had in my uh, in my own uh, software team uh, a few like a while back now so one of the problems that we had was the uh, we had an issue with the application breaking so catastrophically we had a high integration system where all of the applications uh, that we were connecting to the backend APIs they had varying degrees of quality we had a lot of different data sources and each of the backend teams they were in different stages of development themselves some of the teams were really really professional and had like good standards and like really did their job and some teams were borderline didn't care about the system at all so it broke almost on a weekly basis so in that scenario we needed to fix this problem okay so how do we create a situation where this system that we have that depends on all of those backend systems can continue working without this problem now a lot of different people started talking i mean the managers are going to go through this the same way that managers do which is going to oh we're going to have to work in a more agile way like they're going to start spewing things and book meetings because they don't actually know how to solve the problem so they try to quote unquote remove roadblocks by facilitating meetings between the different parties so they can discuss on how we can reach a solution which is manager talk for I don't know what I'm doing or how to solve this problem so I'll just try to book a meeting with the people who are involved and see if they can talk it out that's usually what happens that's the go-to for a manager and then you have of course the uh, like the back-end teams and so forth they were gonna like uh, usually they will say things like oh yeah I will fix it like it's, it's just a small thing and then they will fix it and then the problem will come back again and again and again because the fundamental problem isn't that there's a technically complicated thing going on it is that their work process is less than ideal they are making breaking changes or maintaining their system in a poor way which is a very difficult problem to solve because it's a human problem and human problems are much, much, much harder for software developers and managers, and like that's where like most of the incompetence exists, where people don't actually understand human problems and how to solve human problems in an effective way, and not even the software developers in many cases, because they try to solve everything through code. So let's talk about that uh, as well. But the way that we solved it in this scenario was with code. We solved it by simply saying that you know what, in this case it was a React application. So what we're going to do is that we're going to change our user interface that the system is using, uh, or at least you, that the users are interacting with, to use isolated cards, where basically a widget system. Instead of having like a traditional SBA where you have like this big page that shows all these elements, we will isolate each of the different visual elements into one request per element so each of these cars that show data and like uh, forms and so forth they will just be an isolated component on the UI so my team goes well but 
Frederick, doesn't that mean that we're going to make a lot of backend requests in order to fetch all the data instead of just making like one big like thing? And I go, yeah, absolutely. But we have, remember, we have varying degrees of data quality. So the system that they were using at the time was GraphQL. And I said, the problem with tying all of these data sources into one request is that if anything fails, you're done. So there might be a bunch of stuff that is actually working, but then that one team that has this issue can fails again, and now the whole page is broken. So we need to control the blast radius. So what I suggested was, all right, let's create an error boundary around each of these cards, which for you who don't know React, it's just a way for you to isolate an error on a visual element. And let's make sure that each of these visual components only connect to the backend system that they need to connect to. In other words, we decouple them. They're not going to go through the same gateway now. They're going to be completely de decoupled. And let's see what happens. And what happens was that whenever something broke in that specific Teams API that had all these issues, sure, there was an outage, but it was only isolated to that single place on the system. Everything else continued working, which actually turned out that there was really not that many. Pe there weren't all that many people who were blocked by the fact that there was one little visual component that showed an error, saying that hey, something's wrong with this system. Go and look at it. So we, of course, have to report that to the backend team, and then they fix it. But what happened was that instead of breaking the whole system, we only broke that little piece. Now, why am I telling you about this? Well, I'm glad you asked because that solution, that way of thinking to focus on the problem that you have and try to find a good solution to that problem, such as now in this case, if we talk about React and error boundaries and isolating. If you thought, if you thought about what I just said, nothing about what I just expressed is necessarily specific to React. You could come up with the exact same solution in Vue, in Angular, in like whatever system, right? And that is how you become truly good at all the programming languages. If you just look at the programming language as a tool to do the thing that you want to do. Because when I, when we came up with this solution, we didn't think about, oh, well, how does React help us solve this problem? We thought about the problem. And the problem was that we had an unreliable backend API that we needed to connect to. And we could not trust that it was just going to work. So we had to find a way to build the system that we had in a way so that that single little thing that could break at any moment could break without breaking the entire system. And that is possible in any language, any tool, any like whatever. It's completely agnostic. It's the same sort of concept as test driven development, right? Test driven development has nothing to do with Java or C sharp. It's, it's, it's something that is true in all different programming languages. And as a last tidbit or bonus to you for you, the other way of solving problems is that you, as I was saying, because when you get, when you decouple your thinking from that, oh, I, how do I solve this in a specific language? But because if you just view the language as a tool to solve the problem, sometimes you will realize that, hey, actually, I don't need a programming solution here. I just need a new way of doing things. An example would be for my team, we had major, major issues with meetings. We had tons of these redundant meetings and connecting with all these different stakeholders that we had because we had a lot of backend systems. And so I said to my team, what we're going to do now is that we're going to go through all the different APIs that we connect to, all the uh, like uh, upstream systems that we depend on in order to fetch our data. And we are going to write ourselves a little guide, like a checklist of all the different integrations that we have. And we're going to put that in our source code. So that the, what's going to be included is like references to their documentation, contact people, their email, their like communication channels, all the things that you might need. And by just re writing that down and a few short guides on how the different teams operate and how you connect to different systems, how you get access and so forth, we could reduce down all these unnecessary sync ups that took a lot of extra just redundant time because as you can imagine if you're going to book a bunch of people and then you have to wait for them and everybody has to have like a schedule that fits you could wait you could be blocked for days if not weeks on some tasks because you simply do not have the information you need in order to do solve the problem yourself and in that scenario there's no code that's going to solve that problem but what did solve the problem was a few markdown files in our repository where we just wrote down steps 
how do we fix this problem ourselves so we didn't have to go and ask the other teams to go and he help us every time with things that we could do ourselves. So what I want you to take away from this is that the way that you become good at programming in any programming language is very simple. Be problem oriented. Realize that programming languages and the libraries, it doesn't matter which language you pick usually, if you understand what it is that you're trying to do and then look at what you need to, uh, in terms of tooling and languages and so forth, it's easier for you to figure out how to solve that problem because you're thinking about how to solve a problem versus just using a tool. It's uh, it's, in my opinion, the best way to think about it. Because when you focus on the problem and you have a direction you want to go, your question is really, okay, I have this issue, I need to be able to do these things. What language or what tool that I ha do I have at my disposal to help me fix that problem? It's sort of like, you know, if you want to make fire, you try to think of ways to create enough uh, friction or like a flame so that you can start the fire. You don't just, you know, think about, oh, I have a lighter, let's start a fire. It's, it, you think about it the reverse. And it's the same thing for programming languages. Because once you get to that place and you've become a little bit experienced, you will realize that almost all the programming languages can help you solve whatever you need to do. And if you're sort of experienced at that point, you will realize that you can pick almost any language to do basically anything. And sure, you might have to adjust and like learn a few new things about that language, but you're still going to be able to solve your problem because you are more than a one tool software developer now. Have a great day.